Genesis chapter 2 Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which encompasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Delium and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon, the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekal, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep, to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Hey, Shalom. All praises to you, Bashem. Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakakadash. A much mercy. To you sincere brothers out there at the True House of David, um, all you brothers that's understanding this new covenant and believing it, it is uh, very real. And Genesis 2, I just wanted to go over a couple things with Genesis 2. Um, when you go to Genesis 2, uh, let's see. The Lord, uh, Genesis 2 and 1, it says, Thus says the Lord, and the earth were finished, and all a host of them. And on the seventh day, 
ended his work, which he had made, he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he made. So that seven days, the seven thousand year, the Lord tells you that one day to the Lord is a thousand years. So on the seven thousand year, the Lord rested. Now we're approaching the, the seven thousand year uh, again now. Let's read it real quick. Because the Lord said that the Lord mentions the rest. Um, Hebrews 3. And eight, it says, harden not your hearts as the provocation in the day of the temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works 40 years. It says. Uh, Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err and not in their heart and they have not known my ways so i swear by my raft they shall not enter into my rest so you got to understand by men erring just like they erred in the time of uh moses in that generation you have that whole generation back now so that's why you at this time it's like what seven eight billion people because this is a, a great time on the planet. Guys don't really understand that. By understanding that, then you can understand that it is very uh, serious for this being that last day. Because uh, with all the people on the planet at this point approaching the 6,000, we're approaching the, the 7,000th year again now. This has been 2,000 years since the Lord came. And then after that, 2,000 years back to Abraham. So we're now at um, the seven, we're approaching the seventh day. So, so what's happening is that um, like the Lord said, he said, I swear my wrath, they should not enter to my rest. So because guys grieved, they grieved that generation, just like in uh, Acts 15, that's what men are doing. They're grieving, they're, they, they're grieving this time, this generation. That's why the Lord speaks about the last generation. So Hebrews 3 and 11, it says, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. So, so when you understand enter into my rest, then you can understand that certain men were cut off. Uh, a large portion that's why in Romans 11 it tells you that basically branches were cut off Zechariah 13 and 8 and it shall come to pass that in all the land the Lord said saith the Lord two parts therein shall be cut off and die but the third shall be left therein so this is what you got to understand when the Lord talks about a remnant. And then what the Lord tells you in Hebrews that a lot of men, they won't make it to the rest. So the rest is the 7,000 day. There's a lot of guys that cut off from that rest. That's why so many people in the world right now. There's never been this many people on the planet because everybody's here for that final judgment. That's what guys really don't get. Matter of fact, let's read it real quick and then we're gonna go back to Genesis. I wanted to go over a couple things real quick. Revelations 20.
Galatians 20 and 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell deliver up the dead which were in them, and they would judge every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, and this is the second death. And the and this is the second death, and because this is the judgment. In this final day, that's why the Lord talks about the last day. Real quick. John 6 and 54, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life and I will raise him up in the last day. This is what's happening right now. This is major prophecy. Everything that the Lord was saying was major. So this is the last day for guys coming back. Matter of fact, let's go up real quick. John 6 and 40, and this is the will of him that sent me that each and it says that everyone which seeth the Son believeth on him. Seeing is understanding the Lord. And you know, seeing is um is really uh knowing the Lord like the scriptures say in John um 17. So yeah, so lock it. Let, let me uh let's go to the Lord talks about the last day in John the sixth chapter right here. And I just want to grab this real quick. What the Lord talks about everlasting life. Now he's talking about that for a reason, you know, everlasting life. And, and then that this is what the major judgment is about. And people just, they don't really get it. So the on the 7,000 rest that the, the earth and the world is approaching, a lot are going to be cut off. You see? John 6 and 40. And this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up in the last day. So you, if you have an everlasting life, there's a there's a place of uh, torment. John 6 and 44. No man come to me except the father which have sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. So this is an indication that it's going to be a last day. Whoso eateth my flesh and drink of my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. All right. Check this out. John 12 and 48. He that rejected me received not my word. So what's happening is God will tell you out of their own mouth that they are not in agreement with, with the Lord right now. That's what covenant means. That's what the marriage is, being with him right now in spirit. <laughs> the Lord said, how do you worship the Lord in spirit and the truth? So truly, they're telling you they're not with the Lord right now. That, that is very important. You have to ask that question. <laughs> it's crazy. John 12 and 48, he that rejected me and receiveth not my words, have one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Woo! So this is the last day. Then death and hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Every spirit of evil, pretty much. It's just to, just to sum it up, every spirit of evil. <laughs> That's it. Because you came back over and over. 
and the Lord gave you chances to come back and get it right. That, that's what this is now. For certain of us, this is a chance for us to get it right and move on to the other, uh, into everlasting life. But they, they got it. They got you thinking about this thing messed up. Because if you're not with the Lord right now, then you're going to, you you are being, um, this, this word is judging you right now because you're not really with the Lord. So people feel a certain way. You, you know, you really got to understand that. So people are really um, upset. So another point I want to go get real quick in Genesis, Genesis 2, and it talks about the tree of life and the, and the tree of good and evil. And and right now, who is holding to the tree of good and evil and who is actually believing in the Lord? This is uh, Genesis 2 and 9. It says, and out of the ground that made the Lord power to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sound, to the sight, and good for the food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So this, this, this from the beginning, let's read this over again. It says, and out of the ground made the Lord power and to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight for good. The tree of life. And also in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the tree of life. Which when you go to John. 15. So the, the tree of life, John 15 and 1, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man and every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he burns it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So a lot of guys are not, their conscience isn't clear. They haven't been sanctified. Let's go to Hebrews. You guys, Hebrews is, it, it just, really Hebrews, it, 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 it kills, it, it slaughters guys holding to the old law. And with this false doctrine. Because it's, it's, it's heavy what's really being said. The only reason guys can't really understand this like that is because their hearts is, is dark and they're evil. And the Lord told you in uh, Matthew 13 that uh, men can't, they've been blinded. Their heart is blinded. So they have all the qualities of the old law in them. And the and the, the 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 law of uh, condemnation, that's what the law, law you're under when you hold to that old law. You're under the law of condemnation. So basically, your doctrine is going to be condemnation. That's why the scripture tell you in Second um, um, I can't think of it now. Uh, Hebrews, uh, should I get to come back to me? Hebrews 10 and um, let's say 14, it says, For by one offering he had perfected them forever that are sanctified. And we read earlier, um, when we uh, and John that that he will abide with you forever. So by one offering, he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. So it's them, certain of them. 
whereof the Holy Ghost is also a witness to us for after that he had said before this is a covenant that I will make with them after those days says the Lord I will put my law into their hearts and in their minds I will write them and so we go back to the first century this is being written in men and Paul is a Paul is a, 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 a beautiful example of the Lord being in him you see so certain believers were sanctified already so the believers and when many of them two parts of our people they rejected the Lord when he first came so it's not a surprise they got a doctrine against the Lord right now you know <laughs> it's crazy you literally have a doctrine against the Lord like it's crazy and it's not just one group teaching is all these groups are teaching against the uh, the new covenant so the tree of life like it talks about in Genesis is Yahweh Shai which is the branch he's a tree of life now and the tree, the, the tree of good and evil. So the tree of good and evil it, it is likened unto the law. So certain men are, are of the old law, they're held in bondage to it. And certain of us are of the new. But you have guys that are of the old. <laughs> They trying to hold you back there with them. Man, it is it is it is heavy, bro. I'm gonna go to this real quick. So they prosecutive them that is born of the spirit, Galatians 4 and 29. But as them that was born after the flesh, prosecuted them, prosecuted them. This is the prosecution that was happening in the in the new, in the first century, not necessarily Esau. It was our people teaching against the new covenant. It was really like that, <laughs> for real. Galatians four and twenty nine. But them, but then he that is born after the flesh prosecuted him that is born after the spirit. Even so. It is now. So you got to understand. For teaching a new covenant, you're going to be prosecuted because most of our people, they're of the bondwoman. And they're of the tree of good and evil. So guys are, that are held in bondage to the old law. This, this is where a lot of our people are going to be cut off because they've been cut off in their doctrine. Which Paul said that he was dead to the old law. <laughs> and when it says uh, the Lord have a spouse us to one husband, now we're spouse to the Lord. But everybody didn't, didn't get redeemed back the download. They didn't get that download. They didn't get that understanding. So they're stuck on the old. Galatians 4 and 23. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman by the promise. And these are two allegories. And these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gender to bondage, which is, this is Agar. So God, so certain guys are at this certain mountain spiritually, and they can't cross over to um, the other uh, the other mountain, it says, "For Agar is Mount Sinai, Sinai in Arabia, and answer Jerusalem, which is now and in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which uh, is the mother of us all." So you have a Jerusalem that's above these guys that are 
in bondage to Mount Sinai. That's and so it's going to be in their doctrine and in their understanding. You see, that's why it's crucial to understand that you have to repent to this. It's a spiritual thing. So if you're not spiritual, you're not going to repent. You're not going to really believe. Like this is the last day, like the Lord said. So Hebrews 3, the Lord said he swear that a lot of you will enter into that, that 7,000 day, that rest day where we don't have to work. This is very serious. Certain men are, you're either part of two covenants right now. Certainly you are of the old and you can't cross over to the new. Few of us are of the new and we're crossing over to the new. And this is what is sealing men in their mind. Galatians 4 and 24, which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai was generous to bondage, which is a guard. So you have a the Jerusalem from above, they're free. You see, they are free in the Lord. You see, they're in the spirit. The spirit is over the law. The spirit is not going to have you out here lawless. That, that just means you guys be saying that you have no understanding of this. Corinthians uh, 2, 7 and 22. It says, Art thou be being a servant for, for it, but thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free men. So we're not bound to that old law. Guys can't get that old law out their mind. You know, it is crazy. Because they're of that. You have two covenants. You got you got people. Uh, taken from the tree of good and evil, and you got a few of us taken from the tree of life. It's, it's just like that right now. First Corinthians seven and twenty two. He that is called in the Lord, being the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. Likewise, also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. So if you're not free from that old law, you're not the the servant of. Yeah, I was shining these last days. Your servant of this world. So the Lord said, You either with him or against him. Verse 27 and 22. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is the anointed servant. So if you're still holding to that law, then that means you're not free. Repent to the new covenant. With that, a shallow wall. Speed by key.